I wanted to make a video on expectations. And as I sat down to try and brainstorm and come up with ideas, I started thinking about all the expectations that we create. There's societal expectations, right? The runs we grow up seeing and hearing and become unconscious. There's cultural expectations, which some of us may or may not have, depending on where we grew up. There's the expectations we set for ourselves, especially for those perfectionists. And then there's the expectations we set for other people in our life. I'm a perfectionist at my core. And I grew up with social anxiety. I still struggle with social anxiety. So creating those high and unrealistic expectations around my social life was inevitable. In fact, it was, it was pretty easy to come up with those unrealistic expectations for myself. Of course, there are other areas of my life where I struggle with creating expectations. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the expectations that became the biggest struggle for me, the biggest battle I had to overcome, was the expectations I was creating for other people. And so in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about it. I want to talk about the unrealistic expectations we set in our relationships and why it could potentially be hurting you. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Bridget. And if you're new to the channel, most of my videos, you'll find me talking about introverted stuff, social anxiety, general anxiety, books I'm reading, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So if any of that interests you, make sure you check out some of my other videos as well. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So as I sat down to start brainstorming, I really started to think about the societal expectations. There's things that we hear growing up. We hear it from our parents, our teachers, our peers, other mentors in our life. And there's things that we see too, right? We see it in movies and TV shows. We see our parents doing certain things. So we see it in the home, we see it outside, we see it literally everywhere. What we see, I don't know. But whatever it is that we see, create our expectations, at least for how society is supposed to look. Now, everyone's are obviously gonna look a little different, but I'd say majority of us grow up with this ideal version of who we're eventually supposed to become, what our life should eventually look like, how people are supposed to treat us, how we should treat other people, what kind of job we're supposed to get, what kind of family we're supposed to have, how many kids? Who are we going to marry? And it's, it's all these things. There's beauty standards, of course. There's so many different kinds of expectations. So I started thinking about the societal expectations. And then I moved on to the expectations about myself. Now I mentioned briefly that I grew up with social anxiety. And as most people with social anxiety, if you struggle with social anxiety or if you know someone struggling with social anxiety, at our core, we are perfectionists when it comes to setting expectations regarding our social life. Because we set those expectations that we're supposed to sound interesting, everything that comes out of our mouth should be important. I should sound intelligent. I should sound interesting. I should always keep the conversation going. I should be entertaining. I should make a good impression. People have to like me. And because we're setting those expectations, it makes it so much harder to perform in that setting. And that goes with literally anything in life. It's not just people with social anxiety struggling with that. If we're setting such a high expectation for something, we're already gonna have a bad mindset and that in turn will affect our performance. If we go into, let's say a big game, saying we have to perform well, we have to make X amount of goals, we have to, whatever it is. If we go into it with such a specific expectation and, and we put that kind of pressure on ourselves, well, it's, it's obviously gonna affect our performance. And if we didn't reach those goals, we're gonna feel like shit after. Right, so that happens with anything. And that's something I always struggled with, with trying to connect with people and trying to meet new people and make friends and do all these things. And then of course, I started to think about those expectations I was setting for other people. And then I started realizing that, well, you know, they're all kind of connected in some way. I set such specific and high expectations for people in my life because I set them for myself. If I'm going to be a particular type of person, I expect a close friend, an intimate partner, um, a family member. I, I expect them act a certain way too. If I'm nice to my friend, I expect her to be nice back to me. If I do this for somebody, I expect them to do that for me. Or, but that's not, that's not how life works, as I've come to realize. And then I started to think some more. I recently posted a video on people pleasing. 
and I told my story of how I'm a people pleaser and how it was kind of just this endless cycle of pleasing because it became my identity. And I kept pleasing because people gave me validation. And it was hard to come out of that cycle because that became who I was, right? I was the nice person. I was the responsible person. I was the person you could go to for advice. I was the person who would be willing to go the extra mile for somebody else. And it, yes, it was hard to break out of that cycle, but I think even more frustrating about all that was because I felt like I was such a good person, I expected other people to be good to me as well. And unfortunately, that's not the case, obviously. I, you know, I, I, I do meet a lot of great people. There are so many great people out there. Like I'll give you, I'll give you an example. My husband, he is awesome. He's amazing. He's perfect. He is genuine. He's smart. He's kind sometimes. He, he's got so much energy. He doesn't give up about anything. And that's why I admire him because he's so almost opposite for me in that regard. And so the challenge comes in when, you know, I'm super empathetic and I'm very intuitive to some degree. So I can know when someone needs something without them telling me. And I feel like that's a practice I've adapted because of so many years of not being able to use my voice and always communicating in that sense. I was communicating more through body language and facial expressions and things like that. So I'd like to think I'm very intuitive. I, I think I am. Anyways, regardless, sometimes I can know what he wants without him telling me. And I know when he's sad, I know when he's mad or frustrated or, you know, when he needs me to just back off or when he needs my support, right? And he doesn't have that. And it becomes frustrating because I just feel like you should, right? You should, from knowing me all these years, you should know when I don't want to talk or when I do need to talk, or when you piss me off and you need to apologize. And in reality, that's, it's just not the way it works. And I feel like for such a long time, I just kept thinking it was gonna change, it was gonna change, he was gonna change. But you can't change people that don't want to change, right? That was just something that I had to come to realize that this is who he is. And I wanna backtrack a little bit because I know there are gonna be people saying like, well, that's a quality that he should change, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, with some things, yeah, maybe you should change that about yourself. But I think he can't have that specific trait, personality trait, whatever, because he has something else. You know, you can't have it all. There are a lot of things that I lack and I know it, right? And I make up for it in, in other areas. And I think that's why we work so well. But it's the expectations that I set for him to be a specific type of way. And at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's an expectation. I think I've told this story on the channel before when my sisters recently visited my house last year for the first time, and I was so excited. I built up so much, not pressure on myself, but just, I guess, pressure on the weekend as a whole. I planned so many things. I don't know, I just had this vision of us like being super happy because a lot of the times we see that, whether it's on social media or in a TV show that you just watched. And I just wanted that feeling of like, this is gonna be like the old times and we're gonna be super happy. We're not gonna fight, we're gonna have a great time and it's gonna be wholesome and all the things. And literally everything that could go wrong went wrong. My sister's flight got delayed. Then my other sister's flight got delayed and then the other one got canceled. And then the next day it was like everyone was in a bad mood already. And we went to go to the thing that I planned that was like 45 minutes away, but we had to cancel it because it was the wrong location. And then the next day we went to go get brunch and then we came back and then my older sister and I had a fight and it was just like, oh my God, we, like, we couldn't go this long. Like it was literally not even 48 hours into the trip and we were fighting already. And I was just so not even mad at, at her or mad at myself or mad at anything in particular. I was mad because I set such a specific expectation for how the weekend was supposed to go, for how we were supposed to feel during it and how I was supposed to feel after. I know for a fact, if I hadn't set those expectations, if I just let things be and I wasn't so type A about 
doing all the things and feeling a, a specific way after, I wouldn't be left with that feeling of guilt and shame and sadness and, and whatever. If I hadn't set those expectations, the weekend could have turned out in, in an entirely different way. And that's just one example. This happens with my husband all the time. This happens with other family members all the freaking time. There are long-term expectations that I've set and I still find myself going back to maybe that person will change. Maybe things will be different. Maybe I will have the happily ever after that I envisioned, that I expected, right? But at some point you need to realize, I think that's the solution that I'm really trying to ride home in this video, because I know I'm kind of going off topic, is that really to cure all of this is to relinquish control. And it's probably the hardest thing that you have to do. But the great thing is that, like I said, these are all connected. Your societal expectations will form or create your, your own expectations. And your own expectations are going to form and create or you know change the way you have expectations over other people. If you can relinquish control in one of those areas, it will affect all of them. Because I have noticed a drastic change in how or what I expect from other people and what I expect from myself is I've started to let go of the expectations I was setting for myself. Instead of going into something, say going back to that social anxiety thing, instead of going into an event or a party or even just like a casual dinner with somebody, I'm not going into it having any expectations. I'm just going into it to be present and to not care what happens or what the outcome looks like, right? I will mess up. I'll probably say something stupid. I'll probably think about it later, but I can't expect myself to be a performer all the time. And I can't expect other people in my life to be performers all the time as well. And on top of that, I can't expect people to change that don't want to change. And I'm still working on letting go of certain people and letting go of expectations I have of certain people. That is a constant battle I face. And this goes back to that whole idea that I always mention on this channel. Things that are within my control and things that are not within my control. When I go back to that, that whole fantasy of, you know, trying to make my life look a certain way and expecting my life to look a certain way, it's always going back to what's in my control and what's outside of my control. Expectations of other people are always outside of your control. The only thing that's in your control is what you do, what you say, what you think, what, what you give to the world and what you give to yourself. And that's why I think sometimes expectations for yourself can be a great thing, right? Because if I expect myself, like generally speaking, to be a good person, I think that's a good expectation to have, right? Because I'm always going to be doing my best or giving my best to people. But an expectation that is like way too high and often unrealistic is something like I'm always going to help somebody if they need help. So that's unrealistic. You can't. So it really comes down to those expectations that we're setting for ourselves. That's going to in turn affect the expectations we have for other people. If we can keep those in check, if we can realize what's in our control and what's not in our control, we can be so happy. But it's so much easier to say than to do. And that's why I love doing these videos for you guys because I really find that in every single video, I learn something new about myself or I, I learn something new about how I operate and, and how I can improve. Because just the act of sitting down to brainstorm for this video put things into perspective for me. I wanted to create a video on one thing and it led me to a whole other path a whole other realization of how these things are connected. And so what I want to leave you guys with today is that number one, how certain expectations you have, whether it's from society, whether it's from yourself, or whether it's the ones you're setting for other people, how they're all connected and how by setting high expectations for yourself could be hindering how you set expectations for other people or vice versa. The other thing I want you to remember is that Sometimes you just have to let things go. And again, I know that's easier said than done. But putting into perspective the things that are in your control and the things that are outside of your control makes a huge difference, especially when it comes to those that you're setting for other people. If expectations didn't exist, some of us really wouldn't move forward in life. But if they didn't exist, we really wouldn't have these feelings of 
of sadness, of guilt, of shame, of grief. Well, maybe not grief, but you get the point. It's the, always the expectation of how things are going to go or how somebody is going to be that leaves us with this feeling of failure, of loss, of like, oh my God, like what the heck? And so if we can control that, we can control the expectations we're setting. I want to set certain high expectations for myself to make me move forward in life. But I also want to remind myself that I can't set high expectations in some areas that are outside of my control. At the end of the day, it's always a balance. And remembering that balance and remembering the control, you'll start to realize how you can be improving in some areas of your life and how you can literally just start living more peacefully. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed as always, and I will see you next time.